Hey guys and welcome back to Mulberry Branch Farm. It's Ashley here with you again. It's going to be a hot, humid day here in the Hoosier State. But hey, it's the 4th of July. Later on we get to go to the pool. We get to have some fireworks. So what's a little bit of hard work on the homestead before we get to relax with family? So you guys can see behind me, I've got my chicken tractor. And you can see the lovely trail of how far I've been dragging it this week. It's been working out really well. The chickens love being out on the grass. They look healthier. We're actually going to be weighing them today, and today we're going to be all the way down there. That chicken coop. It's a hot day. I hate working in my chicken coop on hot days because of the dust and dander that's down there, but it's not so much the chicken coop we're working on. It's the chicken run. We're upgrading our netting and making it more predator proof. So I'm going to bring you along today. I apologize ahead of time because I'm probably going to be a hot, sweaty mess, and the hotter and sweatier I get, the less brimming with personality that I become. So let's see how that goes today. So we have a lot to do today down here. Now that we've got those fat boys fed and moved to a new set of grass, we can go ahead, <laughs> get down here, and I'll show you what we did last night because it's obviously going to be cooler at night than during the day. So we started some of the hard work yesterday. <laughs> Um, I feel like I'll be visiting this spot a lot because it is actually in the shade and it is actually very cool here. So why are we re-netting our coop? The reason that we're redoing our fencing here is over the last couple of years, I've had a lot of predators, like a lot. We've had hawks, owls, possums, raccoons, minks, weasel, we've had a lot. <laughs> We've had a lot and, and usually my losses are because I didn't invest in the hardware cloth to begin with. I should have spent the extra money but I know how this is guys. When we're starting out on a homestead we tend to take some of the cheaper routes and later on as we get more established we learn from our mistakes then we go back and we make those changes to make things more efficient, safer for our livestock and a lot less worry or work for us in the long run. So. While I'm picking the 4th of July, celebrating America's birthday by putting up new chicken hardware in my coop. For now, the festivities start later. If I would have done this in the first place, I would have saved myself a lot of heartache. I would have saved some chickens. I would have saved a second round at having to work on my chicken coop. So just keep that in mind. I know for all of you homesteaders out there that have been thrown into the path of self-sufficiency with our changing world right now in current events. It seems really expensive, but trust me, in the long run, it's going to be a lot more efficient that way because if you do things right the first time, you don't have to go back and do it a second, third, or fourth time. But young me, young 21-year-old Ashley with a one-year-old starting with just a house on an old cornfield, I didn't think like that paying for it in the long run but here's the thing that you have to realize if you're kind of like me and you have to go back and redo things because life experience has shown you the way you did it the first time isn't specifically the right way to do it I'm going to be reusing all of my fencing I'll be using because I've already got one panel down there I'll probably be cutting that in half and securing it along my goat fence because my Nigerian dwarfs are like gerbils and they like to get out in every small little opening that they can find so it's not like the fencing is going to go to waste. I'm still going to use it. It'll take me a little bit more work to use it, but hey, what's a little more work, guys? <laughs> We're on a homestead. If it's not this, it would be something else. <laughs> the netting's gone here, and we've taken most of the boards off. They're detached. They're still sitting there, but they're detached. Um, once we get all of that netting off, took my netting off on the top, so I'll probably reconfigure my compost my watering I did plant a tree in there guys um, I'm hoping it is a pear so we'll see I planted it far enough off of my coops and I'm hoping it won't grow into it but time will tell I'm hoping that the nitrates in the chicken um, waste will help this tree grow uh, I try to keep the tire around the bottom because chickens scratch obviously so I'm hoping it'll keep them off their roots a little bit longer but you guys can see got a lot of work in front of me all the boards down here you can see the screws are out so we're good there but I'm gonna have to let El Diablo and them out today because it's too hot 
it is too hot to leave these fellers in the coop all morning so which means I'm going to have a less than friendly rooster loose in this area while I'm trying to wrestle netting, pull old um, fencing staples out, <laughs> pull fencing down. So <laughs> we might end up on world's funniest videos. I don't know. It, it could be a really interesting day. <laughs> because it's about 90 degrees and humid here today in the Hoosier State. So let's go ahead and pick up and clean up and get ready to put on the first um, row of hardware cloth. So now that we've got all of our boards down, the old fencing's down, everything that can kind of get in the way is down, I've got my hardware cloth here, guys. And I'm going to tell you what, I went with a quarter inch hardware cloth. Some people might say that's overkill, Ashley. Half inch will do it. Half inch won't keep out a weasel or snake that can come in and eat chicks or eggs or all kinds of different things. So I decided to spend the extra dollar because guys, this stuff right here is like gold right now. It was really hard for me to find it in stock somewhere and I paid quite a bit for it, a lot more than I would like to admit that I paid for it. And it's because I can't get it ordered in from most of my usual suppliers or every time they get a shipment in, somebody's already bought all of it. So. So when I happened upon this roll the other day, I jumped on it and went ahead and bought it. So I wish I wouldn't have bought it when it's almost 90 degrees out today, but beggars can't be choosers. And when you've got the free time to get things done, you kind of just got to get it done. So that's where we're at today. I'm going to go ahead and start unrolling this and securing it. I will be cutting my hardware cloth with tin snippers. I just find that this is easier. It seems like it cuts pretty consistently and I can cut down it just like I would with scissors and paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. I'm hoping just to get at least the four foot section up because this is four foot by 100. So the dimensions of my outdoor run are 12 by 24 by 12. So to double that, 12, 12, 24 plus 24 is 48 times two is 96. So I should be able to do this with four feet to spare, but I don't think my run is going to be a whole eight feet tall. So I'll probably end up snipping some of it, which that seems like a lot of extra work, but you know what? What's a little extra work, guys? <laughs> it's not like um, I'm already doing a little extra work, so. All right, guys, you can see behind me, we got it up. The hardware cloth is up. The first, the first layer is up. We still have layer number two. So I don't think I'm going to be able to get the four foot because you guys can see from my post here, I bet that's probably like a two and a half foot span, maybe three or it's four down here. So for that magic trick, I will probably roll this out and cut it to the measurements that I need and then tack up the top corners on each side and stretch. I don't I don't know. That's for tomorrow. We've run out of time, so let's see what we can do tomorrow. Okay, guys. So, we've been taking a little bit of break on our coop and you guys can see behind me there's all kinds of feathers. So, we've only got this half part up and we've been closing the girls in at night and I thought I counted everybody last night, but apparently I didn't have everybody in my coop. And I have been trapping religiously for this entire month. And I've caught seven to eight coons. Guess I get to trap again. I'm not sure where she was at. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And I can't even really tell you what would have done it. It's super easy for things to get in here right now. And I thought I'd done a head count and looked out here and everybody was in. So this just proves to me that I need to make sure to get this up because honestly, I just can't lose birds like this, guys. And so are my salmon favorals. It's just one thing after another, you know? But that just goes to show just when we take breaks, 
nature doesn't take a break. So I guess I shouldn't take a break today. I should probably get this all done. Oh, sucks. Okay. I'm in the shade. You guys can probably tell. It's really hot out here. So I'll probably be doing a video very soon about how to keep your chickens and livestock cool because if I'm hot, I know they're hot. So you guys can see, look, I got it up. I'm really proud about that, especially since we just lost the chicken. It's like, I have to get this done today. So um, I'm still gonna be putting netting up on the top there. So there's that post right there. And there's actually a post on the other side and I'm going to attach a board to that and I'll be putting netting over the top, not the hardware cloth, just because we tend to get a little bit heavier snows in Indiana sometimes. And I'm worried that this fine, this small of hardware cloth is going to hold a lot of the snow up and create a very large weight that's held by not so many supports. So I'm afraid I'll damage it if I do it that way. So I do have like um, garden netting or flight net or flight pen netting that I'll be putting over the top. And it's not so much for my chickens. Yeah, they, they try to fly over, um, but it's more for my aerial predators because I feel like last night was a, an owl. I just have a sneaking suspicion. We have great barred owls around here. We have great grays, great horns, king owls. I mean, we have very large flying predators in the nighttime that can easily come and do this to our chickens. And the kill pattern was a little different. So head was gone and the rear end was ripped out of it and I've never seen a coon or an, a possum do that. Now I noticed I could see right into her, um, all the way up into her body cavity and a lot of the eggs that are forming are gone but there was yolk actually inside of her body so I feel like maybe that was the reason that they went towards the rear and maybe they could smell a broken egg when they, they pounced on her because the way that it looks in here, we actually have feathers in one corner but her body was all the way on the other side and there's feathers here and there. So I feel like a lot of the plucking or the, the hit came from right there. Um, and I feel like they tried to fly off with their body and couldn't, couldn't handle the weight, which is not uncommon with owls or hawks in this area. Now there are some that are big enough that can definitely do that. But the ones I'm seeing here with this um, span of netting, I just don't think, I don't think they could have carried it away. So yeah, a little stressful, a little hot, but all we have to do now, get a couple boards on, the netting, put my compost pile back, get some water out there for them, and we're ready to roll to let these guys back out. All right, so the next step is done. You guys can see, I don't know how well through here, but I moved, so I've got these screens in here that allow grass to grow up in my coop so that they have greens that can grow for them um, it just gives them a chance to kind of free range while they're in the coop. However, that's not a lot. I love for that entire area over there where the tree's at to be completely wired like that so that they have like a nice green area with a tree. And I do eventually want to put some like hanging plants like strawberries or start some cucumbers or, or some type of vegetable or fruit that will help me feed them throughout the year. So, and you guys can see I moved my compost. For any of you who have been here for a while, you saw that video where I made my compost and my chickens have done a stellar job. If you didn't get to see that, there's gonna be a card up at the top so that you can visit that video and see how to make a composter out of pallets. Obviously, it's not that hard, but I did have it in the middle of my coop and that really wasn't a very convenient spot for me um, to bring things in and to turn. So I moved it over here where I've got a little run in between. That can double as shade in the morning times but it's also gonna help me bring my compost in and not have to walk it all the way in there because Diablo, that rooster right there, he's a Diablo and he's meaner and snot, meaner and snot. I'm sure a lot of my homesteaders out there, any of my chicken enthusiasts you have probably the same problem. There are roosters that are sweet, that you love, and then there are roosters that remind you, you never wanna to go to hell because I'm sure it's gonna be loaded with things like him because he's mean. So, We've got all that done. I still need to do um, my wood braces through here and I've started to um, weave wire in between just to kind of seal it up. But once I put my boards up here in the middle from the inside, I'll staple the fence to it. So there's really no way anything can sneak in. I'll put my boards on the bottom. Guys, it's hot. I let them out and I actually have a little surprise for you guys before I sign off. So let's go see what it is. She is in 
mama bear mode. The reason this one's in mama bear mode is there are three little ones underneath of her right now. Let's see, she's gonna attack me, but uh, she, she knows. Oh, see, there you guys go. You see one right there. Hello, love. Hello, love. Hello, love. What are you doing? Hello. Come out and say hi, lovers. Oh, you're so cute. Oh, I hope you're a pure salmon fat roll. There's number two. There's actually another under her. And one is in the process of hatching. Oh, look how cute. All right, guys. I'm hot. I've been wrestling with chickens, wrestling with dogs, wrestling with everything. So I'm going to sign off for today, guys. Thanks so much for being here with us while we start to improve our coop. I hope you guys have a great day. Be kind out there. Stay healthy. And we will see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye. Django, get out of there. Dog trying to get in here. Say hi. Hi. You're so cute. Okay, okay. Back to mommy. Back to mommy. Back to mommy.